when you start out a multiplayer risk game, you don't begin with that many armies. It also means you don't have that many territories you're occupying, which translates into less reinforcements. The same holds true for the number of continents occupied, which is usually zero. And if you manage to conquer one, it's very hard to defend against five other players. So, that brings us to our first point, which is staying in the game is absolutely critical early on. One way to accomplish that is to try to select uh, three core different groups of territories that you set up your reinforcements on. Now, if we think about dice probabilities, we want to try to go for situations where the odds are in our favor. What that means is we want to try to avoid confrontations early. Put our troops out of harm's way. Here you can see an opponent is building up near my uh, three troops I'm stationing there. That means don't put any more reinforcements there. On this spot where I'm adding reinforcements, none of my opponents are putting troops nearby, so that's a good place to add on more reinforcements. And then the last place I selected, or the third uh, group of territories I selected, has uh, no major competitors there. One other thing to keep in mind is that card set value is important. Now the set value changes over time. In a multiplayer game, what we want to do is mirror our strategy to that of set value. So for example, when we start out, we want to be conservative when the set value is not increasing by much. One way to accomplish being conservative is to stick to high probability targets. That means attacking only one territory per turn and attacking a territory we have where we have the highest probability of winning, so four dice against one where we're going to win 66% of the time. Now when we actually end up getting uh, three cards after several turns, I would highly recommend hanging on to them. And the only exception I would make is if we have a, a territory occupied uh, that we have a card on where we get an additional two reinforcements. Another exception for this rule might be if your armies are running really thin and uh, you need to trade them in uh, in order to stay in the game and not get eliminated. Now, uh, once a bunch of sets have been turned in and the card value goes up, we want to start being as aggressive as possible or reasonable. One other thing to keep in mind when you uh, select your territories early on and throughout the game is to try to avoid high traffic regions as they are difficult to defend. Uh, now as for continents, I prefer not to go after any. The only exception I would make is possibly uh, Australia. However, uh, I would only go for it under the condition uh, that nobody else is competing for it because it's not really worth uh, getting into a big battle over uh, when you pretty much uh, eliminate yourself if you don't hold on to it and you also can make yourself into a, a takeover target which is not good. When you start each turn you want to ask yourself a couple questions such as who is vulnerable? Do they have any cards that I would like? And lastly, uh, can they successfully be attacked? Or do I have the troops in place to actually pull it off uh, without making myself vulnerable? Now, as we look at this board right here, we look at our first opponent here, and they have nine armies and three cards. So that's a potential takeover target. However, keep in mind, I'm playing as green, and I don't have enough troops in place uh, to take over this particular target but it's definitely something I want to keep my eyes on. As we move on to the yellow army, uh, we look at their holdings. Well, they got 13 armies, three cards. Uh, definitely something I want to keep my eyes on as the game progresses. And the same thing with this army as well. I don't quite have enough troops to overtake that army, but definitely something I want to look at, especially uh, when the cards go up in value. And as opponents get eliminated, we continue on with this process here. Um, in this example here, uh, the yellow army has a total of nine armies left, and they have five cards, which means 
I've got to switch gears here and go after the my turn. It's high priority. So what I do is I look at two possible attack routes. Uh, the first attack route, I'll set up there and I make the attacks accordingly. And after that attack is complete, I look at my second route right there and make the appropriate attacks as well. After those attacks are complete, I eliminate the opponent, which is very good because now I get the much needed reinforcement cards because I have seven cards that means I have to trade three in during my turn which can bolster future attacks what I mean by that is if you have six cards or more you have to turn them in during the turn uh, which is kinda good but if you have less than six cards uh, you have to wait till your next turn to turn them in and you can only do that at the beginning of the turn after we scan the board here, we'll notice that uh, Green has three opponents. And their weakest opponent is this opponent right here. So that would be our next uh, potential takeover target. And what we do is we get enough troops in place. Uh, we will take this opponent out. So we go ahead and take them out there. And that uh, gives us a bunch of extra risk cards. And now we're down to uh, two opponents or three players left, uh, if you look at green right there. Now at this stage in the game, you really want to shift gears. Uh, instead of uh, playing conservative, uh, territories held is very important. Continents held are also very important if you can defend them or set them up. And when you're on the attack, you want to go for the highest probability attack against uh, an opponent. So you want to look for chains of one or uh, territories that are defended by one troop where you have a huge advantage where you're going to win 66% of the time. Now if we look at the screen here, we'll notice green doesn't have a lot of troops left. But that's deceiving because green has a bunch of cards. So green can get 35 reinforcements. What that means is green has, can eliminate an opponent. If you'll notice, uh, Rad only has 22 armies. Rad makes a prime candidate. So all green needs to do is go through these territories right here to eliminate Rad. So when we play as green, we put our reinforcements in place, and we begin attacking Rad's chain of armies. And our goal is to eliminate Rad on this turn so we can get Rad's cards that way, when we turn those cards in, we can use those troops to mount an assault on uh, Black's army, which in this case is much bigger. And we finally eliminate uh, the Rat army. Now we have more cards to trade in. And we're going to get 40 troops, which will give us a really big advantage against our last opponent, Black. Then in turn, we use those troops to attack Black and end up winning the game. Thank you for watching.